In this video, we're going to focus on how we can create a nice hover line that will be triggered the moment we hover over a specific data point. So to create a vertical hover line, what we need to do first is to have our border template ready. So this border template you can find here on chartjs 3com getting started and this link you can find as well in the description box. Once you're on here, scroll down and copy this chunk of code. Next, if you want to support my channel, check out my patreon.com slash chartjs page where you can support the channel and get access to many of my source codes. All right. We have this here now. The first thing what I want to do is I want to convert this into a line chart. So I'm going to say your line chart, save, refresh. There we are. Next thing what I need to do is we're going to create our custom plugin. So I'm going to say a comma, let me say your plugins. And then in here, I'll call this the Hoover line plugin and copy that. And then we're going to say here, slash slash the Hoover line plugin block. Let me say constant Hoover line equals, oh, and then we're going to say here, the ID will be the Hoover line as well, comma, and then the drawing time. So what I want to do is I want to have these lines, which are basically based on Hoover, will be behind or well on top of the data set, but behind the tooltip. So the tooltip will not be blocked or overlapped by the line. We want the tooltip to overlap the line instead. So what I will do here, when will I draw it? I'm going to say here, after data sets, draw data sets draw then i'm going to say here chart arcs and then plugins then what i'm going to do here is i'm going to say here constant equals chart and this is what we call a object destructuring if you don't know what an object destructuring is please check out my video on a setting chart yes object destructuring which you can find in the description uh, of the video so what we're going to say here, I want to have the CTX, I want to have the chart area. Um, what we want from the chart area is basically the top, the bottom, left, right, width and height. Although we don't need all of them, but having them here would be fine. And make sure you spell your chart area correctly, like this. Next, what I want to do here is I want to get the tooltip. The tooltip will be important as well. So now we have most of it. I guess we probably need the scales and more specifically the X and Y scale. Everything that's of excess, we can always remove. So don't worry about that. The next thing what I want to do now is I want to check. Basically what I need to check is if I hover over this item with the tooltip at that moment, I don't want to only draw the tooltip. I want to draw the line from here all the way down. So to do that, what I need to do in here is basically having this tooltip object. And I'm going to show you exactly what I'm going to do here. I'm going to say a console log and just say here tooltip and see what we get as a result. Let's refresh, open up the developer tab. Then if I hover over it, you can see here it shows something and if I hover away, it does something again. You can see your active false, false, false. But you see here the opacity, meaning that it shows a color and then it hides it or basically it creates a transparency. So it's not a color showing, but it's the transparency of it, making it visible and then switching it back to invisible. As you can see here, if I click on one of this, you will see we get some additional information. And one of the most valuable information we need here is probably here, the data points where you can see here on which label or which data point I was hovering on. In this case it was Friday. So what I can do here, I want to grab this. And just put that one in here now. We say your dot tooltip data points zero and make sure data points is a capitalized P at index zero. Save this, refresh. And um, all right, what's happening here is it gives an error. And the reason why is because right now we're not hovering and that's why the error exists. So what I can do here, maybe say length instead. And then, uh, all right, interesting, that doesn't work as well. So let's see if I can do just blank. There you are, that works. But then once I hover it, it recognizes what we have and then it starts to show. So if I click on this, you can see here we have this item here. We get the index or the data index number, the data set number, and we get here what we call the parse. So the parse information is basically the same as the data set or the, sorry, the data index number, which is the data point. And then the Y is the value on the Y scale. 
this is very useful because you can see here now if it's Friday it's the fourth one here based on array 0 1 2 3 4 all right this information is enough but what I want to do is I want to make sure that it works when we hover over each point and we'll show only if we hover and you can see here up it says undefined because when we load it it doesn't work because we didn't hover anywhere so what I'm going to do here make a simple if statement and then we can say here is we have these data points here and then uh, let's get a or well, maybe before we even do this I'm going to save that refresh let's open one of this and we can see here if this active is false let's grab this one dot active save there we are if we hover over it all right interesting that's false as well so that would mean that probably it's not active maybe it is oh uh instead of active it is probably underscore active this one here so what i can do here is i'm going to grab the underscore active and put that one here dot underscore active refresh and as you can see here index is blank of an array but then when i hover it shows an array value so this works and this is the way how we can move forward so what i'm going to do here now is an if statement and i can just remove this one here and then what I'm going to say here is if we have here this item active dot length and the length of this index would be bigger than zero. In that case, what I want to do is I want to show something. So I'm just going to put this console log in here. Now when I hover over it, nothing happens. But then there you are. As you can see here, it moves and then it gives us the value only when we hover over specific items. So what we can do now is getting the X and Y coordinates because when I hover here, I want to get the index number of this. So what we can do here is if I open up this here and there's basically a few items we can uh, access and we can look here into the data points here. Uh, there we are. And what I need here is probably the item here. I guess I need to move one up because I'm too deep in the object of the tooltip. So if I click on this, now I can break this down here. And what I want to do here is basically, let's get very easy the, uh, let's see which one it is. It should be here somewhere. It is, uh, what is that? The parse data, we have the data points. There we are, that's the one I need, the data points. And then in here, when we go index zero, we have the parse data we, which gets the X and Y values. And these values are just easy to work with. Of course, you can also get this one if you want the data, uh, data index, identical in this case. So it doesn't matter. Although this one might be more practical if you have a value or when this here is not a category axis, but a, a value axis. So then it might be a different story. So what I will do is I'll just use this for the X axis, but this value here for the Y axis. So what I'm going to do now is in here, and I'm going to say a constant, and I say here the x coordinate will be, what exactly is the x coordinate? Well, in this case, I'm going to get here the tooltip dot. Then let's look at the item here for the data points, index zero, data index. So if I hover over this, you can see here data points with capital P, index zero, then the data index. So I can say this, data points capital P index zero dot uh, data index next I'm going to say a constant the y coordinates and then later on we have to do some tiny adjustments on this but don't worry about that once we have that you will understand it so what I'm going to do here how do we get the other one is the parse y so we go from data points index zero parse y so we can just grab this here dot parsed y so now we have this and if i would grab now this and say here the y coordinate and just duplicate this as well and for the other one is the x coordinate save refresh we should get here now the x and y coordinates 12 and 4 which is correct you can see here this is 9 and index number 3 all right this is enough now and now we can work on the next part so what i'm going to do now is draw the line so i'm going to say ctx.save to save all variables above that we have 
and then I say ctx dot uh, let's give this a, uh, a line thickness which I want to say line width of three pixels then what I want to do is the line color so say ctx dot dot um, stroke style and the stroke style I'll just grab a single color here well let's grab this black color that's fine once I did this I will start to draw on the item so I'm gonna say ctx dot move to which basically indicates the starting point of a drawing line and let's put this on zero this is basically an x coordinate and a y coordinate and if I would say now we're going to put in here well what I want is let's be very clear I want to make sure that if I'm here hovering on this point it should move to the left to this specific point for now I'll just say this will be uh, based on left and that left is this coordinate here which would be basically on this line here of the chart area for the y we can get the y coordinates for now I'll just put in this here then what I want to do is I'm going to say ctx dot line to to have the line connected with this dot where we have the coordinate so I'm going to say here this and then I'll say here oh well maybe what we could do here top and bottom so basically now if I do this it will connect from the top to the bottom but of course it will not draw yet and the reason why it doesn't draw yet we didn't give the command to draw so I'm going to say ctx dot stroke to draw the line so if I do this now and I will hover over it as you can see here it works but it just moves or impacts other items as well let's solve that first so in the ctx dot save I'm going to say now here ctx dot begin path and what this truly does is it makes uh, the next shape that we're going to draw independent of anything else so it will not bleed over as what you just noticed it will bleed bleed over to a data point or a circle here the border the point border what I want to do I want to avoid that and let's say here begin path all right stroke and then we're going to say here begin path and ctx dot close path make sure we save this refresh we should have now a non-bleeding effect all right this works but it only recognizes this is here so what I'm going to do is if I say here x coordinate you will see it will not work completely because it will just only move a few pixels and you might notice why is it moving there well it's because left here this line here is like 30 pixels and so then it moves like one or two pixels here as you can see it moves a little bit but not enough all right, how do we convert this? This item here, we have a built-in function. It's called the get the value of this data index and convert it into a pixel on the scale. That's why we have this x here. I'm going to use a built-in functionality. We say here x dot get pixel for the value of the index. So if I save this, refresh. Now you can see here it starts to move nicely, but I'm not satisfied because it moves from top to bottom. So what I want to do now is I want to change this into the Y coordinates. And then if I do this, of course right now it just doesn't work. But what I need to do here, do exactly the same here with the value. So what I want to do here is copy this, put it in here and convert the y value into the coordinates of it so now we should have all right it still doesn't work the reason why it doesn't work i realize is we're putting it on the same so it draws on the same location so basically it's like a dot it doesn't move because the moving here doesn't move so what i want to do is i want to start here from here and going all the way down you can see here when we hover over a specific point this is correct but this one here it just stays on the same point so what I want to say here, put it to the bottom. So then we have from this place all to the bottom. All right, interesting. And now it gives a completely unexpected response. So let's see what I have to fix here. So we have this here. Uh, let's see here. We have the Y coordinate. Let me double check. All right, so I noticed what the mistake was. So I was slightly confused. Our code is almost correct, but what I did was without knowing I copied everything, which is correct, but this of course must be converted from X to Y because we're working on the Y scale. My bad. So let's save that, refresh. And as you can see here now, this works. So the final thing you might want to have is 
to make this a dotted line. So how do we convert this into a dotted line? Well, what we can do here, just here down, enter, we're going to say CTX dot, and then we're going to say here, set line with capital L dash. And then here, this is a uh, bracket because it's an array value, and we can say six pixels solid, and then six pixels of white space. Once you do this, save this, refresh, and then you can see here this works. But if you look very carefully, you might notice that everywhere here down and at these points, we have this bleeding over effect. And you might say, well, didn't we use this here to stop that? That is correct. But for the uh, line dash, this doesn't work as, uh, as anything else. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just copy and put in here another set line dash. But here, all I do is I remove all the values to reset the value of the dot or the dotted line into a solid line. Let's save this, refresh, and as you can see here, now it works. Yeah, and all these lines here below are now solid again. And only thing that is dotted is our Hoover line. And there you are.